How did this experience impact, shape, change, and or challenge your understanding of authorship and ownership? Well, one of the first difficulties was in finding the footage that we needed. Um, I had trouble with this, I think a lot of us in this project did, because we're working, first of all, with really abstract ideas. Um, and these are ideas that don't necessarily lend themselves to clear visuals. Uh, I'm working with pedagogical innovation with technology, and there's not actually a whole lot of easy ways to show that. Um, how do you show that besides kids working on computers? Uh, but to take that even further, the things that we could find were usually, uh, especially in the case of kids working on computers and using technologies, that was owned by corporations, that was owned and protected by copyright. Uh, so finding enough information to fill what would be an hour of what needed to be a deep exploration and an engaging exploration of all these different issues uh, was a continual challenge made even harder by the limits of copyrights. I ended up using a lot of video interviews because they were available uh, via open source and, and uh, Creative Commons licenses, but they were just videos of people talking. Uh, so it's hard to do interesting things with that. And as I'll talk about in, in a second, um, finding uh, interesting ways to work with boring footage, that didn't turn out to be what my job was. That turned out to be the job of the editor. So it was my problem, but it wasn't being dealt with by me. It was being dealt with the person who was editing and ergo writing my part. A couple things that I'm thinking about now as a teacher. Uh, the first thing is reconsidering my word limits and length limits that I ask of students uh, to really help students think of their projects rhetorically and let them be as long or as short as they need to be to do the deep work that uh, we should focus on instead. Rather than arbitrary rules and assignments, I'd really like us to be focusing on creating the work that needs to be created to do the job that the students want to do. Uh, and that speaks more to you know, writing in the real world, where there aren't a whole lot of word count limitations, but instead, in fact, we have to trim down the stuff that we want to say to just a letter to the editor or one proposal that's only one page. So that's a new way of kind of approaching writing and, and creation that I'll think. And I think the final thing that I learned from this experience was going through it all on my own really helps me understand what students are doing on their own. So I need to remember as a teacher to keep sharing and working on my own uh, projects and doing the same things I ask them to do. And I think that if I share what I've learned through my continual experiments, through multimodal education, uh, that will keep me in touch with the things that I want them to do.